This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast, episode 41, with guest Katie Teese. Any resources and links that you hear in this episode can be found at yourkickasslife.com forward slash 41. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host. The girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, ass kickers. Andrea Owen here, introducing you to a new guest that I have. And this is someone that I met when I was at my uh, training over the summer with Brene Brown and her senior faculty becoming certified in the daring way. So let me tell you a little bit more about this upcoming guest. Her name is Katie Teese, also known as the Imperfectionista. How awesome is that? Katie is a life coach that runs online and in-person creative experiential coaching workshops. She works with big-hearted, curious souls who want to learn, laugh, and love. She pushes people to discover new things about themselves and how they relate to others using creative exercise, movement explorations, and play. Katie specializes in work with recovering perfectionists and codependents. She believes imperfection is real, authentic, and shockingly beautiful. So without further ado, this is the episode with Katie. Hey there, ass kickers. Welcome to the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast, episode 41. I'm Andrea Owen, and if I sound a little bit like Demi Moore over here with my raspy voice, it's because I am not feeling well. Um, I'm actually on the upswing now from this cold that I think it's my first one of the year, so I am blessed in that respect. I, I'm so excited to bring you this episode, my guest, because... It's the first time that I am talking to y'all about this work that I've told you about, and maybe you're sick of hearing it, before, you know, or maybe you, it's the first time you're hearing it, but if you don't know, I went to um, a very powerful training over the summer in July of 2014 um, with Brene Brown, her senior faculty, and I am currently a certified Daring Way facilitator candidate, getting my certification. And it was uh, really an amazing training, and I met some amazing people there. One of the people that I met there was the wonderfully brilliant and a friend of mine, Katie Teese, who lives out in Arizona. So say hi, Katie. Hello. And um, it's my. I'm excited because it's the first person that I've had on my podcast who's also been trained in this work. So we're basically just going to talk shop for the next 30 minutes, you guys. I hope you're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, this work is really about courage. And as most of you know, that's where your kick-ass life is going, is is really about practicing courage. And one of the things that I, I like to say a lot lately is let's all get comfortable practicing imperfection. Because um, I think in this culture, women, we are up against so many expectations that are impossible to achieve and a lot of those expectations we put on ourselves <laughs> which is kind of crazy and so uh that's what i'm excited to talk about so let's get started katie if you don't know this already i like to sing <laughs> badly i love it <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to break out into song <laughs> oh we're gonna have a musical theater episode here pretty soon yeah i dance <laughs> all the time that's what i'm just changing my podcast to yeah <laughs> musical theater song and dance well let me start with this because i you know, I asked you to be on my podcast and I went over to your blog and like, what's this Katie up to? And um, I love that you wrote this post and it was like so hilarious and so real life and so relatable. So you wrote this post about your quest for the perfect black tank top. And, and there was a reason, you know, that you needed this black tank top and you were not able to find it and ended up giving yourself permission to find the black tank tank top that was good enough. So can you tell us the story and tell us um, you know, what exactly you were giving yourself permission for. And I would love to even discuss with you this whole concept of giving us permission. Yes. So this um, is something that uh, that I, I deal with, you know, embracing imperfection and, you know, living my authentic life all the time. And well, that's um, too bad because none of my listeners deal with that. So, oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> clearly I'm, I'm to the wrong audience mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I love to dance, get my boogie on. And, um, I 
have been taking this dance class and started earlier this year and was invited to do like a little filming. The instructor films um, so that she has a record of her dances and puts them up on YouTube. And we're planning what to wear. And the email goes out saying it's going to be black leggings and a black tank top. Easy. And easy, right? And the first thing that goes into my mind was, I don't have a black tank top. Mm -hmm. And so I start feeling already like I'm on the back foot. Something's wrong. I'm a little bit different. And I don't, you know, I didn't spend too much time in in the moment um, focusing on that. And I went about my day, but I knew that I needed to get this black tank top. So what happened from then until the point that I could go to the store was I created a life-altering tank top like <laughs> this thing was going to be amazing I thought about you know it's going to have these great seams that come down it's going to be long enough so when I raise my arms up it's not going to show like that little bit of skin it's going to make you look like you have the body of like Jennifer Aniston of course <laughs> when she put of it course. on so I was not asking much of a piece of clothing <laughs> at all you know this is this is completely you know in the realm of possibility for, mm -hmm. for a tank top and so I went after work and I only had like, you know, a couple hours to get something. And I went to, we have a shopping area here in Scottsdale um, where there are just a lot of like athletic wear stores. I went into every single store. And you're like, talking like Lululemon. Do you guys have Lululemon, like Lululemon, we have, yep, we have wow. Athleta, we have Lucy, we have Lorna Jane, Calvin Klein, Performance Wear, oh all gosh. of them, Nike. And I went into those stores. I went up to like a sales assistant right away and said, get me every black tank top. <laughs> and oh my, I how tried. much time did you spend that night? Oh, I was, I was like physically hot and sweaty <laughs> just from the <laughs> sheer <laughs> effort of pulling those things on. I mean, if you have ever worn any like, you know, performance athletic wear, it's like scuba gear. It suctions <laughs> you in and the effort of taking those on and off, like it was ridiculous. Oh my God. The whole thing was ridiculous. But after all of that, none of them lived up to this like expectation I'd built up in my mind. So all of a sudden I was in the store. I was exhausted. <laughs> I'm probably and, like, like close to tears at that yes, point. Yes. Yes. Literal tears were coming to my eyes. Like those little prickles, you know, <laughs> where you start to feel oh, like shit. it's coming. Something's coming. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, all of a sudden, I was like, wait, if I'm starting to cry over a, over a tank top, something else is going on here. So that's when I was started to rewind and start looking at this. And then, you know, it dawned on me that it was really, it wasn't about this clothing. It was my feeling and my fear that I wasn't good enough. So mm -hmm. it took it back ultimately to you know to the shame and where you know as Brene will say where there's perfectionism there is shame and so it was this feeling of you know I wasn't good enough and I was going to be dancing with some great dancers and so I started going into that comparison and somehow I let you know my my mind kind of get away from me and I had come up with this false belief that if somehow I could look perfect enough on the outside, then, you know, I would avoid making any mistakes. I would avoid, you know, any painful emotions. I would avoid judgment. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized and, you know, thank, thank goodness that I've done all of this, you know, this amazing work <laughs> so I can apply it to my own life here that I knew that like the next thing I needed to do was to talk about it because I started to identify that shame creeping up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was able to get together with some friends that night and, you know, and share my story. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to cut you off for a second because I, I want to, this is such a great example and it's such a great real life example of, of how this manifests for women. And it's a great example because you're talking about, well, and you and I both know, um, and now everyone else is going to know that's listening, that our physical appearance as women is our number one shame trigger. Huge. And that is usually where perfectionism manifests for us. And, and I know a lot of it starts, you know, it's in our work, it's in our parenting, it's in our relationships, but a lot of the time it's in our physical appearance. Um, so 
And I, I, I love that you were talking about how you made up this story in your mind that if you had this perfect tank, tank top um, and you looked perfect on video and in front of all of these people that you would avoid, you said, um, you said criticism, right? And yeah, like being, being judged or, mm-hmm. you know, if I made a mistake, you know, yeah. that somehow it would protect me. From... Isn't it amazing? So it's like you made up in, in your mind, you know, just based on this, this video in this tank top, that if you had the perfect tank top and you looked perfect, that nobody would say anything, you know, or pe- I should say this, people would say, wow, that Katie girl really did her dancing perfect. She has an amazing body. She must have a perfect life. Exactly. She must be so, an amazing coach. The, 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 right. <laughs> the tank top was going to save the world. It was solve your problems. Uh-huh. It was. Yeah. And so, it, you know, by doing that, then I could avoid any of the scary stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like, what if I get it wrong? What if I make a mistake and it's on video and everyone's going to see it? And everyone's going to be like, did you see that one girl? <laughs> In the bad tank top? <laughs> in the bad tank top? She turned right when she was supposed to Did you see her left. seams? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know we make fun of it, but it's like, it's kind of crazy when you think about the conclusions that we come to over appearance, over clothing and things like that. And um, I want to point out one more thing too before you go on with your story is that is that you did something really, really important. So... And I'm going to make it, I'm going to take a guess here. I'm just going to start putting words in your mouth because I'm bossy on my podcast. That's what I do. <laughs> in case you didn't know. Everyone's like, yeah, we know, Andrea. So I make up that the old Katie would have um, not told anybody and just like settled on a whatever tank top and been super upset about it and been nervous during the whole video, who would have seen the video and then criticized yourself in it and, you know, self-loathing rabbit hole and you would have never told anybody about it or you may have not even showed up to the video shown up yeah Yeah. I didn't say old Katie probably would have come up with an excuse why I couldn't make it I got sick at the last minute Mm -hmm. and then just you know avoid that because you know why put yourself out there with there's risk yeah isolation is what what it is okay so so tell everybody what you did differently so instead of that, um, I have been so, you know, fortunate to experience this work of, you know, of the Daring Way and realize some of those physical symptoms, you know, that were coming up for me were triggers that, that clued me into I was, you know, going down into a little shame spiral. So I, I was able to talk to some friends about it and I told them my story and what what came out when I talked about it was that, you know, I was, I was afraid. Mm -hmm. I was afraid that, you know, I didn't have the right body or the right outfit. You know, I didn't already have the great black tank top hanging up in my closet. I had to go get one. Um, And that it meant that I wasn't, you know, good enough. And so by exposing that, you know, those falsehoods and, dissipated. It really helped. Um, and then the next day, you know, I, I went not to one of the fancy athletic stores. I just went to, you know, my local target. Good old target. Good old target. I love it. (laughs) And picked up just, you know, your basic tank top. I didn't try on everyone in the store either. I just grabbed one. It was probably like $9.99 versus a $50 Lulu (laughs) tank top, right? (laughs) Exactly. Saved myself some money in the process. And, you know, it was fine. It did the job. And I, I gave myself permission. And I know you, you mentioned this earlier about the permission just to, that it was okay. I said, if I make mistakes, I give myself permission to do that, mm-hmm. you know, and I give myself permission to just have fun, to be scared and do it anyway. I love that. Oh, so many good nuggets in the black tank top saga story of Katie Teeks. <laughs> well, and I want to I want to step back to and talk about um, and just really reiterate what you did. And, and in this work, everybody listening, we call what Katie did speaking shame. So instead of not showing up to the video or instead of showing up and hating everything the whole time, she told her friends. And that's really, you know, and what Brene teaches us is that 
it's called speaking shame and you just tell your story and that involves vulnerability it does and involves showing up in your life but you know look at the alternative the alternative clearly isn't working for you and so you know if, if anybody reads my blog you will remember maybe a story that i wrote <clears throat> a few months ago um, i was in a meeting at my son's school and they were reading some of his school mm -hmm. records. My son's on the autism spectrum. And we were new to the school. Um, you know, I, I don't really know these people very much, his teacher, principal, and special ed coordinator. And they're reading his school records. And I don't know if this was on purpose or if it was just something she was reading out loud. And and she was like, you know, Colton's mother has a history of substance abuse and was diagnosed with anxiety disorder in 2003. And I was like, what the shit was just happened? And it was like total shame spiral. You know, I wanted to like interrupt them and tell them about my sobriety and like tell them who I am and what I do for a living. You know, <laughs> I wanted to puff up as Brene teaches us, you know, so um, and the old me would have ran and hid and never talked to my son's school teacher again, totally avoided the principal at all costs uh, isolating. And instead, what I did is I went home and I called my friend and I was like, this happened today and it was really hard and I felt really ashamed when it happened. So that's speaking shame. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm getting at you guys is like, this is, this is part of the work. This is part of the tools of the daring way. And, um, you know, Brene teaches us that shame can't exist when we talk about it. It can't exist in the light. Mm. And never, I mean, never. this is, this is hard stuff, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a continual practice. I mean, even as someone who, you know, I facilitate these groups and, you know, in my coaching, my work is with people who struggle with perfectionism. It's still hard work. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. It still is every day. And, and um, I, I say the same thing to people all the time. Like, perfection is my crypt perfectionism is my kryptonite as well. And. I was really honest about it in my book and I'm like, it was the last chapter that I wrote <laughs> because <laughs> it's that thing where I have to constantly walk my talk. I mean, I've, I've come such, such great lengths, but still it's like, you know, when we talk about armor and like, what's the thing that you put on before you step into the arena? My number one is perfectionism and control. I have issues with control, but, um, Let's talk about permission slips for a second because you mentioned that you gave yourself permission to have fun at the video. And what else did you say you gave yourself permission to do? To make mistakes. Yeah. And I think the other one I said was to be scared and do it anyway. Are y'all listening? <laughs> because... I don't know what's up with me today. I'm feeling very ranty. Sorry, Katie, <laughs> that you had to step into this. Uh, it just is like... Every day we can give ourselves permission to do things of the simplest things. Um, I give myself permission to not find the perfect tank top. I give myself permission to um, not say the right thing during this podcast. I give myself permission to, you know, like I, I do it all the time. Like at the same time when I am like asking the universe for things, um, you know, dear universe, please give me the wisdom and peace and ease that I need right now as I step into this coaching call or as I step into this conversation I'm about to have with my husband. Also, I give myself permission to be scared shitless. <laughs> mm. One of the things I find with the permission slips is that they, they allow me to really accept where I'm at and let go of the feeling of where I think I should be, mm -hmm. you know, Can so you I let that go again, of that shit. So for all to hear it again. <laughs> so it allows me to accept where I'm at and let go of the feeling of should, mm -hmm. you know, like I should be feeling this or I should be, I should be able to, you know, speak articulately this. or mm -hmm. get past that. In reality, accept where I'm at. I might stumble on my words or make a mistake or say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, giving myself permission really, it's its a piece of acceptance. Um, and I think there's also some intention setting with it that it's For like. sure. Energetically. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. I think too, um, permission slips. I, I love that you said that. And it's really, what, what I find common in the work that we do and you know whether you're listening to this and you're a coach or not like you you probably have some extent of personal development under your belt whether you've read a lot of self-help books you listen to a lot of podcasts you've been to workshops your best friends with tony robbins i don't know but there's probably a part of you that's like 
every once in a while that thinks I should be past this by now. Didn't I already work on that? Like, that's what my inner critic says a lot. Do you find that's the case with you too, Katie? Yes. Yes. And I've, I've, uh, I love the phrase I've heard it many times is don't go shooting all over yourself. I love that. (laughs) I know it's messy and gross. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I know also that, like you were mentioning, like that your much of your practice is around the topic of perfectionism. So can you tell us in your life and in the past and, and maybe even the present, like has this gotten, how has it gotten in the way of, of how you live your life? Well, actually, this is a great kind of segue into one of the biggest things that it kind of got in the way in my recent-ish life was with my business. Mm -hmm. Um, When I started off coaching, I set up a coaching business, and I created this business based on what I thought coaching should, big air quotes here that you can't see, should look Mm -hmm. like. And what I thought other people would want it to be. So it wasn't about, um, it wasn't connected to to me authentically. It it was, it was removed. And so I got an office space. I was doing one-to-one work and I had, you know, this kind of realization. I was like, this isn't working for me. And about, uh, probably around December last year, I just decided to completely scrap everything that I had from Mm. my business, rebrand and redefine what it was going to be about. And so taking off this, you know, this, this level of trying to do something for others, there's that sense of external validation that comes with perfectionism Mm -hmm. And feeling like I have to get it just right. There's a certain way it should be done. And throwing that away and then just really getting in touch with who I am and what I have to offer and how I want to appear or how I want to show up in my business. And so that was when I, you know, decided, you know what, I want to do group work. I have an extensive art background. I want to use creativity. I have Mm -hmm. a movement background. I want to use movement in my work. I, you know, shifted from a focus of individual work to more of a focus of group work with some individual clients still, um, and, you know, really changed the focus of my work is authenticity, creativity, and movement. Wow. So it sounds like there was a little bit of people pleasing going on over there too. Oh, for sure. (laughs) You're like, no, I don't deal with that at all, Andrea. Yes. Yeah. I... I totally get it. So where do you think perfectionism shows up a lot for your clients? Um, I think one of the, if you look at perfectionist behaviors, they often fall into two categories, like doing perfectionism behaviors and avoiding perfectionism behaviors. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of people sometimes just jump to the doing, like, oh, I'm doing um, work and I'm going to check it like, 12 times before I hand in this paper to my boss. But one of the things that I see come up a huge amount in my clients is actually the avoiding behavior as a perfectionist behavior. Because often perfectionists have a fear that they won't be able to reach their high standards. Mm -hmm. So instead of even trying, they're too, you know, know, there's, there's that element of being too afraid of failure to even right. try. So why start if I'm going to fail? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so there's there's a big connection I find with perfectionism and procrastination. <laughs> yes. So twin sisters. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's something that I've, I've really noticed in, in my client population is the avoiding behaviors are huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I see that a lot too. And you know, and I'm sure a lot of people that are listening are nodding their head. And I've told this story before. Um, when I was, you know, I, I played tennis since I was three years old. And, um, you know, I, I took group lessons, private lessons, you know, and if I wasn't in lessons, my dad was coaching me because he was a, a USPTA pro. And um, I grew up on the tennis court, like learned to ride my bike there. I mean, everything. And I was uh, 14, 13 or 14. And it was time to try out for the freshman tennis team at in high school. And I remember, um, 
my dad dropped me off and like I told him like I can't have you there you know I can't don't go hide behind the tree which I know you're gonna do anyway (laughs) so he did leave he dropped me off and I remember standing there and looking through the chain link fence and I mean I can almost smell the tennis balls like it's so vivid I remember watching the other girls and so paralyzed with fear that I would you know like like my my tennis career flashed before my eyes you know like what if I lose a tournament what if I am not the best one on the team um all of those things, which are inevitable, you know, it's just life. And I was so afraid that I went to the payphone and called my dad to have him come pick me up. And I never picked up a tennis racket like for like 10 years. And it breaks my heart that I was so caught up in perfectionism. And I think for me that, and I know that this is true for a lot of people, that they there is both that paralyzing fear of failure, but there is also that huge fear of success. Yes. What if I make it and I'm going to be out there in front of everybody and then there's going to be the people that say, who does she think she is? What does she think she's hot shit on the tennis team? Or like, how am I going to sustain this? What if I win that tournament and then I have to go to, to nationals? Like that's the type of thinking that we get into. And it's like it all comes down to vulnerability and this huge risk. And it is way we, – we, we make up that it's just not worth it. It's too painful. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie <Okay. Dinger. laughs> but no, that this is a this is like a real thing. And how do we get past that? You know, like what is what is the solution? And um, you know, Katie and I talked about it a little bit before. You know, talking about it is one. That's my goal in life. I'm not gonna stop talking about it until that I take my last breath. But what are what are some of your go to tools for combating perfectionism? So one thing that I, you know, encourage clients to do is to find something that they can be a beginner at. And that is often a struggle for, you know, it's it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you start something new, you want to be, you know, if there's, you know, there's an element of healthy striving of wanting to be good and wanting to succeed. Um, but also it's going to push, you know, that, that little bit of discomfort. And if there's something that you can try to be a beginner at, you know, maybe not super close to the vest, but, you know, for example, earlier this year, I started um, ice skating. Mm-hmm. And I really don't care if I end up falling on my butt a million times with that. So I'm okay at being a beginner. Whereas if all of a sudden you asked me to, you know, start um, performing in vocal competitions, that's a little bit closer to my best. Might might not be the best place for me to start, but start somewhere where you can get into the practice of just getting out there and trying, um, and then. At the root, as we mentioned earlier, of perfectionism is shame. So shame work is a great piece. And obviously, as we keep coming back to the daring way, is is shame resiliency. And looking at that, understanding where these messages are coming from, and how they show up for us. You know, Mm -hmm. what what triggers, identifying those those trigger areas. Um, And then... You know, self compassion. That's that's huge. That piece of having the ability to you know to love ourselves, yeah, and accept who we are and what we bring to the table. Saying, "This is me. I don't have to be this other thing that I'm trying to put on." Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I talk about perfectionism as this mask that you're going to put on to try and, you know, I think of this like porcelain doll mask that's, you know, completely smooth and shows no lines, no wrinkles. And that's not, that's not real. You have to be able to drop that down and say, this is who I am and accept that and hold that, hold space for ourselves. Oh, you're such a coach holding space. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love that you taught you mentioned self compassion in there too, and that really points back to permission slips. You know, like see how we went full circle, everybody. Um, that's that's part of it, and you know, I, I, of course, we can't wrap it all up with a pretty bow in in thirty thirty five minutes. But um, 
I love those tools and I, I 1000% agree with all of them. And, <clears throat> you know, when you were talking about it in the beginning and what made me think of it is like, I love that assignment, you know, like having somebody go out and be a beginner at something. I've given that assignment out to clients before. And like, for instance, this one client, um, she loved Pinterest. And I'm like, okay, I want you to go on Pinterest and find some like amazing, ridiculously extravagant cake or some <laughs> kind of craft. And I want you to get a C minus. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, that's going to be hard. You know, like it, it's just like be good enough. Just, and you don't have to nail it every single time and cause yourself anxiety. And, and that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people. And Oh, it perfectionists, is. like we tend to, well, I mean, not even just perfectionists, but like I think smart, high achieving women, which are all of the women that listen to my podcast, they have dichotomous thinking. They think in black or, black or white. You know, either I am um, Nancy Kerrigan ice skater or I am terrible. You know, like either I find the perfect tank top. <laughs> no in or between. <laughs> I'm a loser. Yeah, there's no gray area. And so, um, I even still have a hard time with the gray area and it's just my inner critic goes bananas. So it's it's one of those exercises like first find out what the gray area is for you. Find out what your good enough is because like let's be honest you guys, your C- minus is most people's A. <laughs> mm. And I think, you know, that letting go piece, that's a practice, mm -hmm. you know. Girl, um, don't I know it? <laughs> <laughs> letting go and just saying this is this is good enough, and that is okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I um, in one of my workshops, I have an art exercise. Actually, I love this one where I I have people start working on this art piece, and I don't give them a lot of you know what's coming next, and so they start working on it, they get attached, they're working and, you know, doing little details, starting to, I, don't, I hate to use the word, perfect it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I make them pass it to their left around the circle and they get someone else's piece. And so they have to let go of the outcome. Oh they, my God. they no longer <laughs> can, can see what's going to happen with their piece. It's still their piece, but now someone else has it. And then it goes on and people add different pieces to it and, it's uh, it's challenging to let mm -hmm. that go and say, you know what, I did I did what I could with it, and now it's gone. It's out there in the world. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's that's a good one. I've never heard of that one before. Um, that would be uncomfortable, I think, for my, everyone, <laughs> everyone, for everyone. Well, I love this conversation, and I you know I could talk about this all day long and. Thank you so much for your wisdom and insight. And tell everyone where is the best way they can find you and learn more about you and follow you. So the best way to find me is at my website. It's Katie Tees, K-A-T-I-E-T-H-I-E-S dot com. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest as well. But uh, the posting, website's probably... Posting your perfect yes. cakes, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that. The C plus cakes. I am stealing that. <laughs> well, and any any links you guys hear in this episode are at yourkickasslife.com forward slash four one. Uh, the links to Katie's social media contacts and her on her website Um are there. I encourage you to go read that great blog post that she wrote about her black tank top. I love that you were like sweating and <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work putting on that many tank tops in a day. Perfectionism is hard work. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It Let's is. Let it go. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and Ask Kickers, if you don't already know, my book is on sale right now. It is holiday season and it is 14 bucks for U.S. shipping, and that includes personalized signature with a little love note from me. So you can get that at yourkickasslife.com forward slash 52 ways. And please, as always, if you listen to my podcast and you like it, please leave a review and rating on iTunes. That helps other people find my podcast and um, keeps me in a job. So that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Katie, for being here. And I will see you all next time for episode 42. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.